For this warm-up, I'd really just like you to treat these as notes. We are labeling them using the correct notation, which we haven't really gone over in much detail. So you're just going to draw the picture and then show what the notation is. So for a line, it should have the two letters with the arrows above it. For a ray, it's an arrow pointed one direction from its starting point to its ending letter or its second direction. For a triangle, we use that little triangle symbol. For a segment, it should just be a little straight line over the top with no arrows. For the angle, we use that little angle symbol. And then for parallelogram, there's not really any symbol or picture that goes in front of those letters. We just would write parallelogram with the letters that go around it. So pause here if you need more time to draw the picture and write down the notation. Number one says sketch the image of the figure based on your partner's directions. So in class, we're going to have one person facing the board and one person facing the opposite direction so they can't see this next part. If you have a friend, go ahead and try this with them. One person watching the screen, describing how to move your original figure. Here we go. The first partner looking at the screen, describe how to move the original to its image. Be as specific as you can about the direction, whether it's a translation, rotation, or reflection, and how far you would go. For this one, it says sketch the image of the figure based on your partner's directions. So again, if you've already viewed the screen, maybe swap with the partner so now they're looking at the screen and describe how you would move to create the image. Which direction are you moving? How far? Are you rotating? Translating? Reflecting? Be descriptive. All right, and number three. Fill in the blanks to complete these sentences. A vector, these are vectors. A vector is a directed line segment. Two vectors are shown. I always reference that Despicable Me movie when he says his name is Vector because he has both direction and magnitude. He's referring to this math term. It has a specific direction and the magnitude is talking about the length of the vector. So the direction of AB is determined by starting at point A and moving along the segment and ending at point B. This direction is shown by an arrowhead placed at point B. We start at A and head to B. The arrowhead is placed on B. The length of a vector is the length of its underlying segment. So how far is it from A to B? Now we're going to learn the proper technique. It says draw and label the image of point P under a translation along vector AB. We need a straight edge. The first step is to extend a line through the vector. So we're creating a straight line going through the vector. The next step is to trace the figure and the original vector. We do not trace the line we just extended. So trace the figures on the tracing paper if you have some. I'm going to change that so it's also in red. Make sure you 
trace all of vector AB. You want to make sure you have the full thing from A to B. Now we are going to take that tracing paper and we are going to slide it along the extended line until the end matches up with the point of the vector underneath. So make sure that it doesn't turn as you go and make sure your vector is lined up on that line. And you want to make sure that the point and the end match up. Now, wherever that point goes on that tracing paper, just push your pencil. You can either poke a hole through it and draw point P prime, or you can just put an indent in your workbook because it got the, the, um, some thickness to those pages. And then on your paper, you are going to write P prime. You do not need to redraw the vector. You only need to redraw the image of P. This should be on your workbook. And the extended line should be on your workbook. The traced vector should only be on the tracing paper. It does not need to go in your workbook. Draw and label the image of segment PQ under a translation along EF. So we're going to start by extending a line through EF. This is done on your workbook. On your tracing paper, trace the vector making sure to get the end point and the arrow point and trace the segment or whatever figure you're trying to translate. Then take your tracing paper and slide it along that extended line until the end matches up with the point. And you are lined up on the line. Then on your workbook, we need to redraw QP in its new location. Label it with Q prime, P prime. So I've tried to keep it so that the gray or the black is what's done on your workbook and then the red is what's drawn on the tracing paper. Six, consider the diagram of intersecting lines AB and BC and a vector GH. Draw and label the images of AB and BC under the translation along GH. Begin by extending the line through the vector using a straight edge then trace the vector this is going on tracing paper the lines and move that tracing paper along the extended vector or the extended line until the end matches up with the point. Then you are going to retrace the figures on your trace or on your workbook. Please make sure to also label this is point B prime. Here we have C prime, and here we would have A prime. Describe some relationships you observe between the figures and its image in the diagram. The images are still intersecting.
I see that the original is parallel to its image. I'm just going to add this up here because I'm running out of space down there. A, oops, B, C is parallel to line B prime, C prime. And I see that A, B overlaps with A prime, B prime that line in the image. Consider this diagram of UP and figure MATH, which includes the rectangle MATH and a semicircle that has a diameter with segment MA. Draw and label the image of figure MATH under translation along vector UP. Begin by extending the vector, a line through the vector using a straight edge. Then you are going to trace the vector and the image on tracing paper. UP and the image, M-A-T-H, well, that's not going to work. How about just a sketch? Okay, so we're going to take that tracing paper, and we are going to Slide it along the extended line until the end matches up with the point. Then we are going to redraw this image in its new position on our workbook. You will use a straight edge for the parts that you can. And then do your best for the parts that are curved. Make sure you label with primes. Describe some relationships you observe between the figure and its image in the diagram. You also you may want to comment on the corresponding parts, which include the corresponding sides and the corresponding angles. I notice that the angles remain the same. It looks like a 90 degree angle. The angles remain the same. It appears that the side lengths remain the same. For problems 8 through 12, determine whether the statement is always, sometimes, or never true. Provide reasoning and examples or non-examples from problems 4 through 7 to support your claim. A translation changes the length of a segment. That is never true. You can see that the segments remained the same for all of the problems that we did. Problem 5 specifically had a segment, and it remained the same when we translated it. So you can say example 5 here in 8. A translation maps a line to a parallel line. This one is sometimes true. And we'll go back and look at why. In problem six, when we translated along vector H or GH, CB was creating a parallel line with its image, but AB, A prime, B prime weren't parallel. They actually coincide, meaning they lay on top of each other or take up the same space. 
So our example, some of them are parallel, but others coincide or are on the same line. A translation maps an angle to an angle of equal measure. That is always true. And you can see that in problem six, where the angle between the lines remain the same. A translation maps a line to a line. That is also always true. A translation maps parallel lines to parallel lines. That is true, always true. And we saw that in problem seven in the rectangle piece. Make sure your warm-up notes are taken and your workbook is filled in. You're using tracing paper and a straight edge whenever possible.